Welcome back. Let's now uh, get into training a random forest classifier on this data set. Now, as a reminder, we're following the textbook linked in the description, so a big shout out to the author for inspiring these videos. So, the first thing we need to do is to split the data, which is why we've imported uh, cross validation over here from sklearn. Uh, so, uh, first we want to, like I said, we want to split the data, so we'll say, um, so we're going to split the data into four subsets, uh, the legit training, legit test, malware training, and malware test. So we'll say legit train. And for that purpose, we're going to use cross validation, uh, train test split method. So legit train, legit test, mal train, mal test. So we have a multiple assignment here. And from cross validation, we're going to use train test split. And the data that we're going to provide is the last one over here. So data in a new, and we we're also going to provide the labels. Okay, which have been instantiated over here. So these are actually the labels, the legitimate column, the values from the legitimate column. Okay, and we're also going to specify a test size of 20%. Okay, now we're going to instantiate the classifier. So, uh, since we're going to use a random force classifier, we have to instantiate. We have to actually import it. So, we're going to import from um, sklearn ensemble. I believe it's a random forest classifier. There you go. And then we instantiated it. So, random forest classifier, and we're going to say and estimators estimators is going to be equal to 50 which basically means for the number of trees in the forest which is equal to 50 and i'm not going to go into details because i already have a youtube series or playlist of more than 40 videos for introductory machine learning so please check it out if you want a more detailed view on random forests okay um, then we simply uh, fit the classifier or train it, so to speak, on the training uh, data set. So we'll say class if dot fit. We are going to train it on uh, legit train and mall train. Okay, and that's it. It's as simple as that. Now let's run that. Um, so it shouldn't actually take long. You can see that it's uh, still processing, but since this is a 100,000 something uh, sample data set, actually it might take a couple of seconds. Okay, so training is done. Um, we could now look at the score or how the classifier's training went. And for that, we could simply say uh, print the score of the algorithm, which basically means the performance uh, for this training, for this instance of training. And we're actually going to look into classif.score method, the score on the testing, so legit test and mal test. And this is times 100 because we want it in percentages. Okay, that should be it. So the score of the algorithm is 99.38%. This is quite good for a couple of seconds of training. Now, according to the book, we could also look uh, into false positives and false negatives. False positives um, being the percentage of times when the classifier mistakenly classified a sample as being malware, when in reality it was uh, legit while um, false negatives uh, these are the percentages uh, or the percentage of times when the classifier mistakenly classified the sample as being legit when in a reality it was a malware sample so to actually do this uh, type of um, testing we need the confusion matrix module so the confusion matrix module is in sklearn metrics so we could simply say from uh, from sklearn dot matrix import confusion matrix 
Okay, so we, uh, first we will make predictions on the legitimate samples in the test uh, set or subset, if you want to call it like that. So we'll say a, we'll say a result, we're going to use the classifier, so class if, to predict on the legit test. So on the legit test subset. Okay, and then we compute the confusion matrix by providing it two arguments. The samples uh, in the malware test subset and the result that we have here, which is the prediction on the legit test subset. Okay, so we'll say conf.mat from confusion matrix and we're going to use the method that we just imported over here, so confusion matrix, and we look into mall test and result as I said. Now the result of this operation, so let me actually run the cell with shift enter. So the result of this operation is going to be an array of shape, number of labels, number of labels. So in this case it's going to be a 2-2 two, two. and we can simply look at it with confmat.shape and if we look at it it's an array of shape 2-2. Two, two. If we really want to make sure it's an array, we can say conf underscore mat. So the type of conf mat, and it says numpy n dimensional array. So two dimensional in this case, two, two. Okay, and if we look at the confusion matrix itself, say confusion matrix, we can see its uh, actual value. So over here we have the true positives. We have the false positives, over here we have the false negatives, and here we have the true negatives. Okay, so in this case, if we want to get the false positives, we will be dividing 97 by the total number of these two, or by the sum over this row. If we want to get the false negatives, we will be dividing 72 by the total number of... Uh, of these two values over here. So let's just print them to the screen. For false pos positives, we'll say false positives. And like I said, we want to uh, divide this one, so conf.mat zero, so row zero, element one, zero one, that's going to be divided by the sum of conf.mat zero, which actually means the sum of these two. Okay, and then we want to multiply by 100 and close the parenthesis. Okay, so we have some conf mat zero, all right, and all times 100, and this is not needed there. Okay, so now it should be good to go. And then uh, for the false negatives, we're going to do something similar. So we'll say print false, not flash, false negatives. We're going to say in this case confmat1, zero. So this element, and we're going to divide this element by the sum of these two, which is simply saying sum confmat1. And of course, we're going to multiply it with 100 and close the parentheses. Okay, and now we can run this with shift enter. And as we can see, the false positives are 0.50 and false negatives are 0.86. But you could have figured uh, out that uh, these numbers are really low given the, the false, uh, the true positives and these being the false positives. So really low percentages if you could simply divide this one by this one. All right, so um, we can see that both uh, rates are pretty low, which is a good thing. Now, the tricky part would be to actually predict on a new and unseen sample. And I'm saying it's tricky because you would have to provide the sample to the classifier in exactly the same format like the rest of the samples in the data set. And I'm not going to do that here because our focus is to showcase how machine learning can work for cybersecurity and not actually delve into the intricacies or complexities of a certain problem. Maybe if you fellows are super interested, I'd be doing a whole series or a longer video at least uh, on uh, that. 
All right, in the next video, we're going to quickly assess the performance of another classifier um, on this data set. So we're going to look at the gradient boosting classifier. Now, before finishing, I want to remind you that I'm working on a course about Python and cybersecurity in which you will learn the basics of Python, after which uh, I'll teach you how to code Python scripts and little programs that will help you in your penetration testing or cybersecurity career. Please check the link in the description and subscribe to the list because I will send a message with a one-time big discount for the course when uh, it's going to go live. That being said, please like, subscribe and share this video if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next video.